Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible out. We're going to take a look at the continuation of the commentary on Jeremiah 26. Doesn't look like there is much commentary on this, so I'll just read it. But the uh, I notice my microphone settings keep changing. I, I, I can't figure that one out. But, uh, yeah, I wonder... If it's being done, I don't know. But, you know, honestly, after looking at some of these very popular church, churchy channels, where they're talking about the, uh, the you-know-whos that are, uh, and their little situations, I can't believe the number of people that are just fawning over those that the Bible calls the Antichrists. You know, these people deserve what they're going to get. They really do. I mean, it's obvious they never pick up a Bible. It's obvious. All you got to do is read the book of John. John chapter 8, John chapter 10, John chapter 6. I mean, you'll know who is behind killing Jesus. And, uh, you know, and yet they think that those people are the chosen so whatever they will get what they deserve because the Lord is just all right well this is chaplain Bob Walker light of the world ministries in John 8 12 Jesus said I am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house, and speak unto all the cities of Judah, which come to worship in the Lord's house. All the words that I command thee to speak unto them, Diminish not a word. You know, tell them everything I say. Don't leave anything out. If so be, they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way, that I may repent me of the evil which I purpose to do unto them because of the evil of their doings. You know, people, apply this today. I don't care if you live in the UK, the European Union, or if you live in the USSA, uh, the U uh, United Soviet States America. Yeah. God's remnant has to repent and turn from their wicked ways. And me too. I got to look in a mirror. We all do. Verse 4. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, If ye will not hearken to me, to walk in my law, which I have set before you, to hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened. God sent them, but they wouldn't listen. And all these morons that think, oh, well, Jesus changed the law. No, he didn't change the law. I mean, he took the two commandments, broke down the ten to the two, but do you really think that he wants... Uh, a city like San Francisco to remain unpunished by his people? I don't think so. You think he loves to have Satanists running around in the government? I don't think so. It's like I did a video. When the church tolerates evil, the evil's going to spread. And then the evil will not tolerate, tolerate the church. Look at my community page. There's a pastor in 
prison, uh, a high, uh, what do they call it? High, uh, what do they call that? Let me think here. Yeah, a high security prison in Canada because he was dared to open his doors and preach the gospel. He must be a real preacher because they don't put the fake preachers in jail. No, uh-uh. So, how many uh, how many mosque uh, inmens of Islam? How many of them are in prison? How many rabbis are in prison because they open their doors? Uh, I haven't heard anything on the news. Have you? If you have, please post it in the comments. I'd be very interested. I have not read one thing about a mosque being closed or a synagogue being closed or a rabbi or an inman going to prison. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The only thing I've heard about is pastors going to prison for daring to open their churches. Yeah. So, to hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened. Verse 6. Then will I make this house like Shiloh, and I'll make the city a curse to all nations of the earth. If you ask me right now, Jerusalem is a curse to all the nations of the earth. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. Now it came to pass, when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking, all that the Lord had commanded him to speak unto all the people, that the priests and the prophets and all the people took him, saying, Thou shalt surely die. Oh yeah, we don't like the message. We're going to kill the messenger. We're going to thou shalt surely die. We're going to kill you. Verse 9. Why hast thou prophesied in the name of the Lord saying, This house shall be like Shiloh and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant. And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the princes of Judah heard these things, then they came up from the king's house unto the house of the Lord and sat down in the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. Then spake the priests and the prophets unto the princes and to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die, for he hath prophesied against this city, as ye have heard with your ears. Then spake Jeremiah unto all the princes and to all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city all the words that ye have heard. Therefore now amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will repent him of the evil that he hath pronounced against you. You think if there was a Jeremiah today speaking to the United Kingdom, the European Union, or the United States, you think the people would change their ways? I doubt it. I doubt it. We need a Jeremiah. So, 14, verse 14. As for me, Behold, I am in your hand. Do with me as seemeth good, and meet unto you. But know ye for certain, that if you put me to death, ye shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourselves, and upon the city, and upon the inhabitants thereof. For of a truth the Lord hath sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears. Then said the princes and all the people, unto the priests and to the prophets. This man is not worthy to die, for he hath spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. 
Then rose up certain of the elders of the land and spake to all the assembly of the people, saying, oh, I'm going to probably mispronounce some bad words here. Well, they're not bad words. They're just, I'm going to mispronounce them badly. Micah, the Morashathite, prophesied in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and spake to all the people of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Zion shall be plowed like a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house as the high places of a forest. Did Hezekiah, king of Judah, and all Judah put him at all to death? Did he not fear the Lord and besought the Lord? And the Lord repented him of the evil which he had pronounced against them? Thus might we procure great evil against our souls. And here's these words, verse 20. And there was also a man that prophesied in the name of the Lord, Urijah, the son of Shemaiah of Kirjath-Jerim, who prophesied against this city and against this land according to all the words of Jeremiah. And when Jehoiakim, the king, with all his mighty men and all the princes, heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. But Urijah heard it and was afraid. He was afraid and fled and went into Egypt. And Jehoiakim, the king, sent men into Egypt, name, namely, Inothen, the son of Achbor, and certain men with him into Egypt. And they fetched forth Urijah out of Egypt and brought him unto Jehoiakim the king, who slew him with the sword and cast his dead body into the graves of the common people. Yeah, a lot of times if you were a prophet of the Lord, you didn't live very long. Nevertheless, the hand of Ahikam, the son of Shapham, was with Jeremiah, that they should not give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. And that is the end of chapter 26. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.